Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We started doing math problems long time ago from this book that I'm holding in my hand here, the first edition. And the problem that I'm about to do, all the problems that you see, every single problem that you see that, that you will find in the first edition are the exact same problem that reappeared in the second edition with the exception of two that I have found so far. So we, I have done this problem already before. I'm in the process of redoing this same problem at a faster pace. So I'm going to redo the problem that we did on day number 10 and 11, but at the faster pace. If you need more help, if you need to go at a slower pace, if there is something that I skipped, uh, go, uh, go and as I said, watch day 10 and 11 and you will find the same exact problem being done in greater depth. Uh, so let's get going. Problem number three on page number 118. We are given a, we are given a graph. We are told that graph for function f of x is given. We are told that the function f of x looks like this, absolute value of 2x plus 4. The very first thing we need to understand here that this 2 there that we see here is the slope. Slope equals to this, this graph has a slope of positive 2. And we also notice that the y-intercept is positive 4. Now this is what I mean by going at a faster pace. If you need to understand what y-intercept means and if you need to understand how to recognize and so forth on a, in a given equation, as I said, go and watch day number 10 and 11 and you will get the same information uh, at a much slower pace. So, so here we go. We have a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of positive 4. This is a very important information. We will need this later on as we solve the problem. The question is, the question is which of the following Which of the following functions, which they are calling g of x, they give it a, a, a name of g, the previous function, the original function is called f. These are just names of the functions. Which of the following functions that they give us, g of x, they, they give us five of them. The question is, which of the following functions g of x will cut, or if you like, intersect f of x. And that's all. That's all we are looking for. There are five answer choices there. The question is, which of these five will intersect the graph that is given to us, which, which, they are, which we are calling the function f. So let's do it, shall we? So that's it. Now that we understand the question, now that we have the question, I'm going to erase all of this, because we need the room. Here's the solution. There are only two possibilities. There are only two possible scenarios, there are only two possibilities. Either, either g of x will cut f of x from the top, or From the bottom, of course. What else? Common sense dictates that there are only two possibilities. It's either going to cut it from the top or from the bottom. And we're going to analyze both of these scenarios and see what happens. Let's look at scenario one. Let's look at scenario one. Scenario one, which is where we're going to contemplate what happens if it cuts it from the top. If g of x cuts f of x from the top then again there are two possibilities there are two possible scenarios one is that g of x has positive slope and another possibility or g of x has 
negative slope. I'm going to show you now in the picture. Here is the original graph that is given to us. The original graph looks like this. Now we're looking at such situations where we're contemplating a, situ a, a, a possibility that uh, this is this is the f of x here. We're contemplating the possibility that g of x cuts the, this graph f of x from the top. Now notice, in, I, I forgot to point it out there, if you look at the answer choices, you will see the g of x that is given to us in the five answer choices, they are all linear equations. They are all linear equations, they are straight line. So the two possibilities are this. Here's, here's one possibility. Let's put it, let me put it in a different color, just for the flare, just because we have the flare for the dramatic. So it's going to cut it, it, it cuts it from the top with a positive slope. So here's, here's the top part here, this is the top part here, so it cuts it at the top with a positive slope, right there. Like this, it cuts it right here. Another possibility is that it cuts it, when I say top part, we talk about, by top, we mean anything that lies above, anything that lies above the intercept of positive 4. Anything that lies above the intercept of positive 4. Another possibility is that it cuts on the top, but with a negative slope, something like this, something like this. And now it cuts it here. And this line, the blue line, is negative slope. And the red line that we saw there is positively slope. But those are, those are the two possibilities. Either it's at a positive slope or negative slope, but it's cutting it at the top. What we notice is that, what we notice is that in either of the scenario, whether it's a positive slope or negative slope, in either case, in either case, g of x must, must have a uh, y-intercept of more than positive 4. As you can see, this is the positive 4. This guy, the blue line, has an intercept somewhere here. The red line has a y-intercept of somewhere here. As you can see, they are more than positive 4. Because that's what, that's what it means to cut it from the top. Cut it from the top half of the, top part of the f of x. Let's continue then. What we notice is that if you look at the answer choices, what we notice is that in none of the five answer choices, I need the room, I need the room, so where can we put it? Let's put it here. In none of the five choices, do we have a y-intercept of more than positive 4. Therefore, scenario 1 is ruled out. Scenario 1 is ruled out. That's it, it's not possible. If you look at the answer choices, A, B, C, D, and E, if you look at the answer choices, A, B, C, D, and E, A has a y-intercept of negative 2, B has a y-intercept of positive 3, C has a y-intercept of negative 2, D has a y-intercept of positive 3, and E has a y-intercept of negative 2. As you can see, in none of these five scenarios, I need my pointer, in none of these five scenarios do we do, do we have a do we have a y-intercept of more than positive four, which means whatever is whatever is going on here, however this this g of x is cutting f of x at whatever location that is uh, that is cutting it is happening at the bottom at the bottom of the graph. The top is not where it's, where the action is taking place. So we have to look at the second scenario. That's it. We are done with scenario one. Scenario one. Is, is ruled out. Scenario 1 is not possible. Scenario 1 is not possible. Let's look at scenario 2. Of course, as I'm doing it here, as you can see, even though I told you that this, in, this, in this redo of the problem I'm going at a faster pace, but as you can tell, I'm still going at a quite leisurely pace. Uh, that's okay. We are, this, we are not taking the real exam right now. We are just learning. It's okay. Let's look at scenario 2. In scenario 2, we are looking at the situations where g of x cuts f of x from the bottom. It cuts g of x from the bottom. Here is our 
Here is our f of x. And g of x cuts it from the bottom. If that were the case, in this case, in this case, we will need g of x to have a slope of greater than positive 2. Why? Because the original, original graph that is given to us, g of x, has a slope of positive 2. This guy has a slope of positive 2. So if we start out, I need a lot more room. I wish I... Okay, there we go. Look, watch this. If you have a line here, this, this, is, a, this is a slope of positive 2. So if you have a, if you have a line that, that has a slope of less than positive 2, like this, it will never intersect the above graph. It will never intersect. I'm going to raise this so I can actually show you in a, in, a, in a more detail so that I'm not constricted here. If here is our graph, and if the line that we're looking at has a slope of less than 2, the farther apart they go, the farther away they get. This, this bottom line will never intersect the top line because top line has a slope of positive 2 and this is a slope of less than positive 2. So they go farther and farther apart. If I have two lines here, if I have two lines here, they go farther and farther apart. They're not getting closer. The only way this line, the bottom line, is going to intersect the top line is if it has a slope of more than 2, so eventually it cuts it. That's it. If it has a slope of more than 2, then it doesn't matter how low it then it doesn't matter how low it starts out. This is positive 4 here. Y intercept is positive 4. It doesn't matter how low it starts out, even if it starts out way over here, as long as it has a slope of more than positive 2, it will eventually catch up and will cut the line like this. Voila. It's the y intercept is somewhere here, but you see eventually it cut it because this bottom line has a very steep slope. The slope is more slope is more than 2. So we're looking for one answer choice, and there, there will only be one obviously because you can't have more than one right answer. We're looking for one answer choice out of the five that they give us with a slope of more than positive two, and that is all there is in this problem. Let's look at the answer choices. Now that we understand it, all of a sudden we realize that this is actually a very simple question. This, this is actually a very straightforward question. The only answer choice, the only answer choice with a slope greater than positive 2 is, well let's find out, x minus 2, x minus 2, x plus 3, 2x minus 2, 2x minus 2, 2x plus 3, and finally 3x minus 2. As you can see, clearly, the only answer choice with the slope of more than positive 2, with the slope of more than positive 2 is E. This one has a slope of 1, this one has a slope of 1, this one has a slope of 2, this one has a slope of 2. This guy right here has a slope of 3, voila, has a slope of 3. The answer is E because that's the only answer choice which has a slope of more than 2 and therefore eventually it will catch up. Now where it will catch up and where it will actually intersect the, the graph that is given to us, f of x, if you're interested and if you, just for learning purposes obviously, if you, if you know, if, if you had to figure out what the point of intersection of the two graphs is, what are the coordinates of that point where they cut each other, where they cut each other, what can we put it, just put it right here. Here's our f of x, and here is our g of x. They cut somewhere here. This guy right here is the f of x. The original graph is the f of x. They cut right here. If you're interested in finding out the coordinates of that point, that is exactly what I have done in the videos that I mentioned earlier, day number 10 and 11. And there we spent a lot more time. As you can see, we spent two days on it, and we did the same exact problem. But this was a, this was a quicker uh, because this is exactly what you will do in the real exam, obviously. Nobody is asking us for the coordinates of the point of intersection. That's it. We are done with this one. I will see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.